Now we're going to keep this brief. Later I'm going to have a much more detailed explanation of transistors and how they work. For now, we just want to understand that a transistor is kind of the most fundamentally discrete part of the computer components that we're going to discuss. A transistor is an electronically controlled switch. Now, this is a little bit different from the switch on your wall, right? Your finger or muscle action controls the switch on your wall, but the result is the same. When you turn on the switch on your wall, the light comes on in your room. A transistor is very much like that. A computer has some electric power applied to a supply line, just like your light has some electric power that's ready and waiting to be supplied to the light before you turn the switch on. The computer uses a control wire. Uh, this might be set by an input that you provide. If you had a Boolean value, for example, like a true or a false, a true might symbolize that this wire gets voltage applied. When this control wire has voltage applied, that means that the voltage in the supply can flow through the transistor and out the other side, which we can then measure and say that this transistor is in fact showing a value of one, it is on. So this is very much like a switch on your wall. You turn on the switch on the wall, the light in your room comes on and you can see that light, you can read it and say, okay, the light is on. That is the most fundamental component of the computer that we're going to discuss. And this is actually what makes up the CPU and uh, it also is involved in memory and most other components of the computer. A transistor is made up of silicon. Now, silicon is what's known of a semiconductor and you've probably heard these terms before. A semiconductor just means that it has electrical conductivity, but it's not the greatest. It's not uh, a highly conductive metal like copper. It doesn't, uh, it's not something you would put in a wire to move electricity from one place to another. Um, but it's not an insulator either. It's not something that prevents electricity completely from moving from one place to another. The interesting thing about silicon is that it can be doped or you can add other chemicals that allow silicon to change its conductive properties. So when we apply voltage on this control wire, it can become more conductive and allow the electricity to flow through. But when we take voltage away, we can prevent the electricity from flowing through this transistor or electronic switch and hold it in one spot. So it's this unique property that allows us to use silicon as the material to create a transistor which allows us to build electronic computers. Electronic computers are important because they are very fast in how quickly these switches can turn on and off. And that is why we can have computers that do billions of things a second. If we had to have a mechanical process manipulate this switch like a relay, things are much slower. So now that we understand what a transistor is, it's just basically an electronic switch, let's look at how we use that to build what's known as an integrated circuit. So an integrated circuit is basically just a combination of hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of transistors into a single chip. There's been many manufacturing processes that have happened uh, as this has grown. If you go back far enough before we had transistors at all, there were things like vacuum tubes. A vacuum tube was not very fast, excruciatingly slow, but it did perform the, the function that we needed to do, which was store a one or a zero. A transistor now is much faster because it's electronically switched. There's no mechanical part, there's no vacuum, and in fact, there's nothing to burn out. So one of the early problems with vacuum tubes is that they had a lifespan of how many times they would actually work. And it was very common for computers with hundreds, thousands, or, or many thousands of these vacuum tubes to run into problems because the vacuum tubes would fail in the middle of running the calculation. A transistor is much more resilient and hardy and lasts a lot longer time. In the 1970s, we started building transistors into what are known as integrated circuits, bringing more and more transistors into one piece of silicon. And this kept going. We went from a regular integrated circuit to a very large scale integrated circuit. And most recently, manufacturing processes have reached what's called an ultra large scale integrated circuit. This just means that we can keep getting more and more transistors into a relatively small amount of silicon. And as we do, the possibilities of what we can do with those transistors to make our chips better, faster, improve. And they improve a lot. This is actually the idea behind Moore's Law, uh, which we also discussed in, in this other video. If you haven't checked that out, please do.